well. I think they have everything they need to do to do a really good job here. You know, Cloud9 are not uh, perfect. They're a team that's extremely scary, though. I think, again, there's so much clutch factor to Cloud9 right now. Every single player can deliver really crazy things. So it's going to be a scrappy one, and that's, uh, that's what we like to see. MIBR's pick first, though. Overpass to begin, Harry, as we get on into the pistol round. It's Cloud9 with the T side. They go late to mid with the bomb as well. No one's spotting, so Cello doesn't get that information. Cloud9 still sat outside of B early. I guess they're hoping that that info gets grabbed because they show the bomb mid and then they come back B late. Still four players here, though. And I feel like there's no fullback policy if that bomb doesn't get spotted. So they're just running into the stack. You gotta hope someone comes alive because right now two have died. Danico and Bolt, even Shuz joining the fray. And yeah, like I like the idea there for Cloud9, but when you don't get spotted in mid, why would MIBR move away from the quad B and they don't lose a single player on that defense? So a strong start, good pistol for the Brazilians. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with this start as well. Like, again, I always love watching you know any team playing on the CT side of Ever Overpass because you can claim so much initial ground and space and cause a lot of problems with the T's just with those very forward uh, Molotovs that we'll see towards, you know, the Fountain as well as uh, the ones in Sewers. And it kind of forces the T's to have to use Smokes if they want to have normal timings. Then they have their second guess, so many positions that the CTs could have, which means that the CTs can set up loads of different setups all over the place, really. And that, that makes it really exciting situations. Now, I'm liking the approach here from Cloud9, just taking everybody up long. If they can just get a couple kills at least, which they it looks like it might be on, aren't just kind of turtling up here. So there could be some opportunities here for Cloud9. But with that said, it might be on, you know, they, they, they have all the info at this point. So they are pretty well equipped to know what's to deal with it. Oh, the spam deagle almost kills Cello. Instead, it's Cloud9 using that smoke to cross all the way to the site, fighting their way through CT bolts. Only here for one. Cello trying to retake from the short side. Danico are holding strong drops to the bomb. And even though Cloud9 actually got control of the site, never clearing out the dumpster player, they couldn't plant for CT. They try and hunt him down and they lose the bomb. Mezzi is on a recovery mission to B. I like the idea. He knew he was being hunted, tries to kill Yell, but loses his life in the process. Maybe a B plant was available instead, but either way, it's an eco here for Cloud9. And despite that that cool idea of throwing that close long smoke, you know, cutting off the two toilet players that, that can't deny the plant, while well, Cloud9 had denied any ground in CT. See, I know I know the pistol round was a few ago now, but uh, for anyone watching along, I think this is why on overpass, especially in pugs, you know, pro game is more forgivable, I think. I hate going B in, in, a, in, in a T side pistol on this map. It feels like it's so standard nowadays to have, you know, one A early watch, try and get info, and then you stack B under the idea that yeah, if they rush, they're running into four. If they go A, exactly what you were just saying, Dan, about how, like, you know, because this map is kind of so long, like, there's a lot of area of engagement before you actually get to that A bomb site. There are ways that you can get that information at a pretty low risk and then rotate players around accordingly. Um, I'm just never a fan of immediate B plays to begin an overpass game for that reason, right? We saw what happens. You run into a four-man stack in a pistol round. You're you're pretty screwed if someone on your team doesn't have like some incre incredible individual uh, performance there. But now we have the buy round back in and the orbs ready to go head to head right away. Yeah, what's interesting here as well is that you know MIBR. Uh, opted to just hold on to a lot of their utility. They haven't really thrown very much at the start of the rounds. And again, oftentimes at the start of the round, you could see even two smokes, like two or three mollies thrown in the first like 10 seconds for the CTs. So we, instead what we got was Yell went for an aggressive pick towards Fountain. And that kind of does a similar job. It's obviously not quite as good, but it does create a lot of question marks for the T's because they have to think, okay, do they have a setup in bathrooms? Do they have a setup around connector? Is there something going along uh, around on long? and so on and so forth. So it does burn a lot of time and, and they are still holding on to a lot of utility here. So NYBR really winning the utility game. And that, that means that if Cloudline try to set piece onto a site, if NYBR know it's coming, they should be able to have a huge advantage just with the extra grenades alone. So really well poised here with this initial approach from NYBR. 
I'll have to see though if it, if Carbine can just you know use the brute force and uh, circumvent that. Oh, Cello, so blind. But the lack of gunfire has actually rewarded him. He gets away with that freebie onto Zeppa. And now the rest of Cloud9 grouping up outside of the B site where they've got their work cut out for them, I think it's fair to say. You've still got two players here for MIBR, more players rotating down. So these guys that do exist here now as the incumbent forces just need to hold on. And they've done a good job at that. The rotations have come through and there it is, the lock-in for MIBR. I don't know, man. I think I think when you look at the individuals in this team, it is a very very scary matchup for Cloud9. I mean, you know, I'm kind of basing that on the fact of, you know, the stats that I've seen and the, the bits of games that I caught, like you guys covering. But uh, you know, MIBR, they're this very explosive team that they try to keep you on your toes a lot. They're, they're, there's a lot of talent here, right? Like a lot of individuals who can step up. Like we've had games where Yell top frags with the AWP while cooling. That normally benefits the team massively. You, you've had great games out of Cello as of late, right? Thinking back to yesterday in that uh, in that little head-to-head, -head, that was that that was one there where he was trying to carry them to victory versus heroic. Then you've also got Danico as like the young blood, right? Who we've had great stuff from. Oh, these flashes devastate the man over at Monster, ah. and that's clean. All right, you shouldn't be getting away with this if you're Cloud9. Yell's trying to restore some normality on the short wrap. He's got it down to a three on four. Cello arriving as well at the monster site. Cloud9, they don't want to throw this away, but they might not have any choice in the matter as it's slowly but surely turning back in favor of MIBR. They get it locked in and it's Yell right at the end with four in a spectacular little sequence to I get five on the board for MIBR. I feel like Cloud9 could have made so much more of that round. They did everything perfectly. They run in, they get those two opening kills, they smoke off the AWP on short, and then they just start taking fights. It's like, you, you have a huge advantage. You can plant that bomb, play tight angles, force MIBR to commit. They're on a double AWP on a retake, two men down. Cloud9 just, just chase the fights with pistols. And yeah, okay, sure. If you win the fights, then no problem. But they get mopped up. And not even a bomb plant. Like, yeah, they don't need the money for it would have been nice to get them in a position to convert the round this time faster approach they get a pick b they trade one for one and they bail bomb was spotted zeppa was tagged low and so cloud nine don't want to commit and that's a understandable rotate but now it's going to feel pretty obvious where this one's ending to mibr right if you don't take the b rush while you've got it surely you're going back to a yes it's, it's been interesting because again like in that last gun round uh, MIBR held on to smokes. At the, they had they dropped smokes at the 20 second mark because they've been holding on to them. So clearly they've decided that like Cloudline play generally slower paces and they can hold on to their util. And I like this from Cloudline. They force the issue go really fast and there's a huge dump from MIBR. But the call, yeah, I was trying to creep up the ladder gets a lot of info. The problem is is that's not great a great timing to get info in this case because there's a minute left. There's still plenty of time from Yell you know getting that info for Cloudline to be able to rotate towards A. So they can just just sit here now if they're in it for quite a while, and that should create a lot of doubt for the MIBR defense. And they only have one smoke left. It's on Danico. He's also got the AWP, and he's on the A site. So there's no way for MIBR to slow down this post into the B site. It's got to be done on the setup, and that's not a great way to start things off. It's going to have to be a huge series of kills from Charlie. And they don't see him. This could be it. Great start from Charlie. Finds a quick double. And that's, that is really amazing. They didn't check that because that was everything. Yeah, especially the back oh. railing boost. Alex has a plant here, 10 seconds. He's going to stick it. He can go for heaven as well. He can try and take that CT control, play it from a range, but he knows the fight might be near. Oh, faced by Cello immediately and nowhere to go but the site. Yeah, that's, uh, the, you know, the, the info, like you said, was was not i guess in one hand like sort of not valuable because there's a minute left but what it did give yell was the knowledge that zeppa was walking b like he could see him walking to t-spawn so that you know from b rush denied back to mid back to b cloud9 didn't want to make it obvious and in doing so they get spotted so yeah they mibr set up for that nice double play of the monster cello gets a lot done and then closes the round as well very good patience for him to just give it up, respect the bomb plant from Alex and uh, win the 1v1. 6-0. MIBR looking very good right now. Cloud9, pistols, oh, sorry, rifles can come through. They're taking their time to buy, discussing how they want to disperse. 
I do think I do think like the fast control I think is might be quite a good response uh, from from what MIBR started with. I don't know if MIBR will change their CT approach because this could also be a good time to to actually start changing it. But I would I would love to see you know fast sewers control because it's not extremely difficult to to do that, and especially if we don't get those those early nades from the CT side, which you'd often expect the molotovs and smokes, and then it should be pretty easy to take it and fairly low risk and it's going to create a lot of pressure. So you're going to convince, uh, you'll create an argument for MIBR to at least dump some utility. Because again, they've been pretty resistant to doing that in some of the previous gun rounds. So let's see if this is any different. Well, it looks like it is. We can get a forward Molotov there. The, the classic T-Steps Molotov. And they're going to hold a setup around the bathrooms. This is looking great from MIBR. They're, they're really trying to run quite a diversity of approaches. Ooh, that's oh, that's nasty. What clean. an off angle there from Bolts. Yeah, that's that's juicy. And look at that. MIBR. This is this is uh, you know, like a great CT side. They're they're really doing everything they can to whittle down Cloud9 and then just fall back into these horribly passive setups where it's like, yeah, look, you're gonna have to waste all this time clearing the bathrooms, clearing all these mid-angles. We ain't even there, mate. You're in a three on five. We've fallen back into the site. Rotations, they're on standby. Oh. Bit of a tag either which way, but it ultimately favors MIBR even further. <sighs> Flash over, trying to set up this man in the toilets. He's playing around this smoke right now. Cello hidden in it. He loves these smoke pushes, does Cello. And with the re-smoke going down, that should really seal the deal. Like, yeah, why would we smoke our own guy off again? Well, clearly you ain't faced Cello before, mate. This guy lives and breathes in the smoke. He's now going to come through on the wrap, and he's got the last kill locked in. It's nice, it's clean, it's... What, four alive for the side of MIBR? Five alive. Five alive, rather, four for yeah. Bolts as yeah. Well. Double in con and then double on the site as Cello backstabs the last man. Really nice play from MIBR so far. And they were just stacked up on A as well, right? They've, they've been fully cognizant of where Cloud9 are committing, even when Cloud9 try and fake things out and deny that information. MIBR have been very good at, at reading this CT side so far. 7-0. C9 back in with a low econ round. They got the smokes and the pistols. Cello fighting a smoke in mid, unsurprising, but not much to be given away. That's a nice shot. Outside of B though, oh, that's a bomb and monster. Danico just tearing them with the org. He's really been using this gun a lot. He had a lot of really nice transfers with that weapon on the opening day. I think it was the second day rather. Opening day was heroic, second day. And yeah, like really really talented player for someone who's relatively unknown coming into this team man there's uh there's 11 kills on all of cloud nine and there's 11 kills on danico and bolts individually for the side of mibr this is incredibly one-sided yeah it's and i think you know a lot of it is just because mibr's approach is so awesome again if we do have that forward all the top it has to be burned out with the smoke and that's going to allow Cloud9 to get forward positioning, and that also it allows them to understand that you know what MIBR, MIBR are doing a little bit better. You can see things will slow down here as they, they start to default a little bit. You've got you know, Floppy, who's sort of the lurk towards the A side of the map, and Mezzi's just sitting and connected right now, whilst his teammates, you know, in that little grouping of three, work towards bathrooms. It is such a laboured effort on overpass to gain control. And they're going to go down. Are they going to? I think this is just a clearance, isn't it? Yeah. I was wondering if we were going to see them just move into some sewers pressure together. Try to pull some rotations. It's a minute to go, and it might be I'll have a couple smokes remaining, so that they're on a pretty good pace in terms of that. Ooh, Cello loves to play these these games around the smokes, man. Yeah. He jumped on that little bin as well. I've never seen anyone do that. That's ballsy. Got spammed though. Aids could be good, but dodged well by S tag and Cloud9 walking down B right now through the connector. Not gonna get spotted. Only two players lower right now. Reagro on mid for MIBR. If Cello goes through the smoke, he, firstly, he's crazy. Secondly, he's going to get all this information. I think they're going to realize too little too late, though. Shiz needs to hold strong. Flash for the monster side coming through. Oh, he's mollied out, though. Great flashes. Everyone's white inside of B, and everyone's dead, which certainly helps. Cloud9 looking for their first. 
One thing that I think is really interesting about this round um, is that you know, this round, Cloud9, you know, played slower, but they 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 created a more confusing situation for NYBR because they had that pressure around uh, bathrooms and they also had sewers control. So I'd 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 like it if we saw NYBR trying to take more control around sewers, maybe make more plays around there, um, or or to try, try to create some kind of efforts like towards a lo you know a long setup or something, something that kind of allows them whilst Cloud9 are playing really slow to actually they you know themselves get some information and possibly make a playoff of because you know what they tried here was to just play very passively just try to slow cloud nine uh, cloud nine down as much as they can and try to have as much utility remaining as possible when they actually do execute and just hope that there's just not much time left which is you know how they won a couple of the rounds so we'll see if, see if there's any kind of change there because i think this is a great adaptation from cloud nine Oh yeah, so something else, you know we were surprised by the vetoes in this, is that like we were sat here saying, yeah, this doesn't make a lot of sense as to how this has panned out. That's because actually I think they were backwards. And uh, and uh, yeah, you know, happen, happens to the best of us, um, you know. But yeah, this is Cloud9's map pick, uh, as it says on the screen. It got updated on all this, but just wanted to clarify for when we did the map vetoes. Yeah, it makes sense why they're not banning their best map. I was thinking like, yeah, nuke out for Cloud9, all right, that's a weird one. Don't see that every day, ever, actually, but... Uh, no, yeah, it was MIBR banning it. This is Cloud9's pick, which therefore makes this 1-8 to eight scoreline that much rougher, it would feel like. Here comes this push into the B site from Floppy. And he tries to go deep in, but he ends up going deep down. It's now Danico trying to line them up. Only good for a bit of damage. And Bolts is also brought down low, so he's calling for rotates. He's calling for help. Some assistance from this A bomb site, and they are arriving slowly but surely. The Molotovs slowing them down. Forty seconds, and maybe I'll go quiet. Oh, Bolts picks up a kill from CT in graffiti. Alex is trying to spam. He could get that kill. He's so low, but so are Cloud9. The bomb loose in the water right now. Alex not even going for it. This feels like a done round. Surely they're going to try and go for frags as Alex peels back. S tag pushes in, and it's all on one man and one man alone. They molly the bomb. Alex shoots, and that's it. It's MIBR cleaning it up on B, slowing it down at the right time and peeling out of the site. 9 1, Cloud 9 can't commit with the bomb so far forward. This is such a great uh, CT side from MIBR so far. I think it's they're, they're doing a lot of that classic overpass CT stuff where it's like, you're going to feel our presence everywhere. It's going to take you ages. It's like you're walking through the mud to like get to a bomb site, And then when you eventually do, we've got, you know, we've got the info we need and we've had, we've had the ability to make the plays along the way as well. So we're always kind of like a step ahead. And once again, you know, we're going to see actually this time more, more pressure around the sewers, but actually it's going to be a smoke from floppy to gain entrance to sewers. Obviously you can play around the smoke as well, but it can be a little bit scary if there's a CT push. He, he's been basically lurking this consistently in the default by himself, which is something that MIBR, if they, if they understood that, they could easily take advantage of this and just take sewers control for, uh, and it would be pretty, uh, it wouldn't be very risky to do so, as it is just floppy doing everything by himself. Yeah, look, they hear him down and short, and now they're getting more aggressive over here in middle. Cello. So close to discovering Zeppa, and there's the swing. Zeppa caught over in mid. No one's able to get the trade, and that is a huge problem, man. Like, Cloud9, so often they lose a player, and then MIBR are allowed to fall back in into these bomb sites and just play the numbers game, right? If you're MIBR, if you trade this effectively, you win the round. Like, that's it. That's the lock-in. So that means now you're hinging on someone on Cloud9 getting a multi-kill, creating this space. Yell getting aggressive could have been that opener, but instead just a little bit of damage onto him before he repositions. There's three up inside of that A site right now, and Cello's extended the lead even more. Yeah, they they lose Yell. You've still got this double hold, still two players in B as well. And so as Cloud9 group up and try and move into this B bomb site, they've got their work cut out for them. They're still walking into a double stack. There's the first attention getting drawn into Danico, and now they might not be ready for Shuz, who takes the head off of Alex. MIBR up to 10, the CT side looking real crisp.
And I mean, you know, just just even even the scoreboard tells like a real story here, right? Everyone on MIBR is kind of pulling their way, all stepping up. The fact that so many of these kills are going untraded is a huge problem for Cloud9. You know, it, it, it goes from like bad to worse, it feels like, because they'll lose one. And then when everyone's kind of getting a bit hectic, rotating back round to take up that position to make sure MIBR aren't doing anything cheeky. MIBR are always repositioning, getting away with, you know, like a two for one, which is great. Yell's getting pressured in mid. He's got to have a standout performance. Oh. They're all around him. Disappears in the oh. smoke and oh, how's he oh. still alive? He goes for the jump shot, but it doesn't connect. It's a little bit ballsy and that ends up costing him his life. However, the round should still be a lock in. That nade forces Mezzi forward, but he does get out of there for the time being. There it is. Shuz it short into lock in that round for MIBR. And the dominance continues 11 to 1 over Cloud9. Honestly, it's like playing pinball right now. You know, like wherever Cloud9 go, they're just getting knocked between one site and the other, like running back and forth between connector. Oh, pushed out of A, pushed out of B. Nowhere is safe. Tic Tacs straight from the box. Damn. Things are going wild in the MIBR camp right now, and they are looking very, very good indeed. Nowhere is safe for Cloud9. Can barely get out mid. The AWP shotgun close in the smoke. Bolt is getting so many multi kills as well. This is going to be very hard for Cloud9 to get anything done in 11 1. Yeah, this, this is definitely going to be a learning experience, I think, in some respects. I think MIBR have done a really good job in like mixing up the ways that you effectively play uh, CT overpass. I think, you know, Cloud9 have a good overpass game and it's a, a lot of it is their CT side as it is for a lot of teams. So they need to get at least, at least like a couple more rounds on the board to give themselves some chance to kind of do the same. Um, but Cloud9 don't play as, um, I would say, as advanced as what MIBR are doing. Cloud9 do what they do very, very well, but they tend to just rely on more passive play from what we've seen so far. So I'm kind of curious how that's going to pan out, if they have any other things they've been working on we'll, that we'll see, but... But yeah, 11-1, a comfortable scoreline. And it, again, it feels like MIBR just have such a good approach as a team right now. And they keep throwing different paces, different uh, uh, sets of utility at Cloud9. Sometimes they go for just dry peaks. So it's, you know, in that sense, MIBR are, are constantly surprising Cloud9, which, which in of itself kind of creates a delay because you, you as Cloud9 are feeling like anything's possible from the CTs at any given moment. So you, you have to take caution, you have to be cautious at all times. So interestingly, we'll get the three man long take. And there's actually two players towards Monster here. You can see Floppy's pretty deep. He's got Alex for support. Bomb still down towards T spawn. It's a great pickup from Mezzi towards bathrooms. And oh, okay, they've got a lot to work with now. 5v3, getting the bomb. They can't push off of that because they have to get the bomb first. But a 5v3 with 30 seconds left. It's looking pretty good here for C9. Yeah, surely, surely this is a second round. That's what you're telling yourself if you're C9 at this point. You know, you need everything you can get and you just got to get past one man inside of B. If it's not a big performance here out of SHC, it's probably just the save that Molly forces him out into the open and Zephyr trades it right away. Now there are these fast rotates at short. Oh, they're going to try to deny the bomb plant. There's the swing in. Oh, and while they get one kill on Danico, it's not fast enough to deny that bomb. So Cloud9 do get that second. MIBR, you know, you understand why they go for that. The money is so good for MIBR that they can afford to soak that up. It was high risk, but high reward. And if they did deny that bomb plant, would have been the uh, would have been the round. Yeah, happy to see that they've actually gotten at least another round on the board, so we have something to work with in the second half. Another one obviously would be great. It just gives you the ability to survive a pistol and the the consequences of winning or losing it. Um, so again, it's this time actually a different approach again from MIBR. They, they've actually gone very, very passive towards A, and we have uh, Danico who's got that org looking. Oh, it has that uh, angle into sewers. Cloud9 have slowed down their default a little bit though. And they're trying to make it look similar. And MIBR don't have forward information. So this it looks like Cloud9 could hit a surprising timing towards B here because they're, they're really going against some of those 
those default timings where at this point they still have just have floppy here by himself but instead it's the entire team oh yeah here it is fast pace and already in Danico gonna have to help us with this crossfire. There's the first from Bolts drawing the attention in. The Org lighting them up and this B play, well, they might have hit a timing that wow. looked all right. That didn't matter. They won one out of the three gunfights they had. A big performance there from the players on MIBR in the site, right, to actually hold that one back. And, and you know, that's kind of a situation where we're where trying to not telegraph the play, trying to just flash yourself in and go for the Hail Mary really comes back to hurt them. You know, one of the reasons that last round ended up working was because they force SHZ out of the barrels with the Molotov and into the open. You know, we would have been able to do a lot more, as we saw right there, if not mollied. And so they try to throw the Molotov in late. That means you've got one less player with a gun out. You know, you're trying to throw the utility once you've actually made it into the site so as to not telegraph it any sooner and uh yeah it comes back to punish c9 so great half for mibr already already locked in it can only get better and they've already started this round with the man advantage to boot yeah, boot in the face <laughs> oh dear curb stop as well cello bolts everyone finding frags it's only messy and he's not long for this world either. 13 to 2 is Cloud9's map pick, although you wouldn't know it. Boy, oh boy, let's hope they can do something, anything, maybe a pistol in the second half, or this could be a sweep of a series straight to the playoffs. Join us in just a moment for the second half. Welcome back, everybody, to CS Summit 007. What a performance we have here from MIBR. This is the first map against Cloud9, and their CT side was remarkably good. It was, it was just some textbook overpass shenanigans, and Cloud9 now needs to replicate what MIBR did. I don't know if they can do it. It's going to take a lot, and especially after coming off of a beating. You know, you got to get yourself warm, I feel like. And, well, to begin with, we have this, like, very... Very forward setup right in the center of the map, actually, which allows Cloud9 to respond quickly to pretty much anything. I like this as well. I might be trying to get some info here. Running around along the bathroom is making a lot of noise. And there we go. Now Floppy's going to reveal himself. That's pretty stunning. And okay, MIBR. Not looking good here. <laughs> Two versus five. Oh, this is a. Uh... Is, uh, sub it feels. They, they can't oh, mess this up, right? The no. crossfire is pretty good. Oh, yeah, few. Sigh of relief. Cloud9 now. How many rounds will they give us? All the rounds, maybe, if they have their way. MIBR want to end it. A sap. Might even be forcing. No bomb plant, but tempting always. Really nice shots from Floppy Man. He He really is good in this team. I feel like he's, he's every game I see, he's doing something unnatural, disallowed. Out mid, Molly and smoked it. Alex is playing behind the bin. This is a spot. But yeah, he doesn't want to remain there forever. Careful the party, they can walk right over you. Got support from Mezzi in the connector as well, but he'll be backing up. They'll go towards the A site. They know MIBR in middle. Just holding with the Deagles right now. Nice and patient play for MIBR. See if Cloud9 give them anything here. Take what you can get. Oh, I like that way of gaining info. Now, the windows in the overpass toilets were removed a long time ago. Many people still ask for boosts in your matchmaking games. Remind them that you can't do that. But Mezzi's jumping off of the bench and still spotting above Divider. Not seen that way of doing it before. Now tucked and waiting. MIBR coming A. It's more a matter of when, not if. I hope they spam Divider. I think it's such a... I, I don't know, man. I feel like you should always give this wall a little spam. Because even if you don't get... They, they, they're doing it. They're doing From it. From a weird angle, though. Yeah. Even even if you don't get the kill, right? You at least pressure the guy there. Also, the blood splatters through the wall. So it's like a dead giveaway. You know the moment you've tagged someone there. Batman is still using it. And MIBR 
not abusing it. They get shut down in this one. It is just one man left alive in the form of Bolts, and he's taken out of the round. So that's nice. It's clean. It's quick. And it's Cloud9 on to four. No money left for MIBR, so five rounds should be uh, right around the corner here for Cloud9. Still a long ways to go to make this comeback be even, be even close to achievable. But you've at least started the baby steps needed to get you on the way there. Right, so, I mean, one thing I, I want to look out for is to see if Cloud9 changed anything on their CT side. But obviously, we haven't really run into the, the 4 by versus 4 by just yet. And this, this is a great start for C9 to just get off to a great footing in a, in, a, in a game where they can't make any mistakes now. So, but I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, are they going to run this, like, really passive CT setup that they were kind of consistently doing in previous matches? Where they, they rely he pretty heavily on just kind of hitting the shots and playing really effective defense, but allowing the T sides to really get uh, lots of control towards the sites uh, pretty easily. And uh, you know, we'll see if that trade off works out this time for them as well. But for now, obviously, we have MIBR just trying to waste some time, trying to waste some utility, see if they can get another cheeky kill or two. Well, denied. Denied. Where that came from. Oh, there's something for Yell, but surely can't grab the gun. They can aggro short. MLBR just delaying the inevitable. Look at Yell. He's flanking A. He's actually forcing rotations up because he's very loud on his run. And so Messi's got to move, even though the bomb has dropped. Monster. Shiz with a weapon. Oh, that nails this shot, but he is dead. Yell's just looking for a kill, and he gives away his position. Mezzi can just run. 15 seconds, no bomb. Oh, Yell, yeah. Yell needs to die. Yeah, he needs to die, and Mezzi will at least give him that. So now this is where the going gets tough, right? You got this first buy around. Cloud9, if they, if they are ever going to embark on this comeback, uh, you know, getting ahead in this first rifle is a must. And they're going to be running a little bit of a bonus, right? I say that. It's just a one Famous, or two Famous is kept in, rather. Orp in the hands of Alex as well. So we get to see that head-to-head -head of him versus Yell. Double con stack here for Cloud9. MIBR, they've had to contend for con a hell of a lot. So this is something they should be ready for, right? Maybe not the double stack, but they know that Cloud9 have frequently had players in the connector. MIBR being very, very slow on the approach. These con players could get stuck, and that's the real worry, right? SHZ... Can we see his perspective quick? I'd love to see what kind of a line he's taking here. Because it looks like he's just hanging around on the left-hand side, keeping these connector players trapped down in con. Are they pushing a smoke or something? They're very deep. Oh, no, they're up on top of the boost. stairs. Alex picks Danico out mid. And she just might try and activate, but Alex's back is covered. He's actually might cover it himself. It's on a timing. Doesn't want to be caught looking down with Nate out. This is a very risky move for Alex. Mezzi is there, but now the, the jig is up. They know there's two players con side. The molly into a smoke. The flash pops and back up Shiz goes. Very weird turn of events right now. Cloud9 allowed to escape down B. Bomb dropped up in the toilets. S tag escaping. There's no one out long though. He's just got to worry about these short side players, and he's doing a great job of dealing with them one by one. Famas, VVAK, somehow coming out on top. Lots of off angles taken, and finally his head is removed as well. Interesting round. <laughs> Okay, well, it's uh, it's going to work out really well for Cloud9, though. Yeah, Maybe I mean... Maybe they kill off the time, possibly. It's, it's yeah. a little bit weird. I think MIBR gave them too much respect there, right? They knew they had those two players stuck in connector. Like, that that should feel like a gold mine, you know, that you're able to kind of exploit a little bit. 
and uh, and use that to get an advantage. I mean, even if you went to connector and you trade like evenly, right, and you end you end up in a three on three, that's still hugely advantageous to MIBR there. But instead, you know, the first player falls. The other guys that were in mid actually just peel back and kind of sit around and don't really do anything. Uh, they had a B player that was holding originally, like watching Monster. I, I thought he was going to swing around and help out at holding the connector fullback right out towards short, which as we saw is what Cloud9 ended up doing. But instead, he also just went back to T-Spawn. SHZ died down in COD. It, it felt like, you know, there wasn't really the response, like an appropriate response to, to turning that idea that Cloud9 had into an advantage for MIBR. I thought they would have been better at capitalizing on that information that, that you've got that double stack to contest with. Because they also had lots of utility. That's something else to bear in mind, right? Admittedly, when they start losing players, it gets a bit more dire. But even then, they had like two nades. You know, if you double nade into connector, those two players are low, like immediately. There's not really much they can can do about it and uh, and so suddenly that could have been a way to get into that round like turning an advantage that cloud nine have against them but instead it was very very slow i think way too much respect given especially with how dominant this first half was and so now mibr maybe going to try something a little bit faster and i think this is the right time to give this a go you know, I think you, you don't want Cloud9 to warm back up into this game. And uh, something a bit more decisive with a bit more speed, a bit more punch behind it might be the perfect solution. It's a very nice read from Alex as well. He threw in the mid Molotov that Danico smoked and threw a flash over to fake the MIBR going out mid. Alex didn't fall for it. He immediately rotates B in ex expectation. Nice grenade stack. Zephyr getting dunked down. Monster that provides openings for bolts to get out through this position. He's so low. Floppy. Same story on barrels. No Molotov to get him out. Alex is providing cover, baiting for his teammate who hides now down in the water. Alex goes back for more. Very confident on this AWP. We talk about how this is a, a new role for him, but it, it looks very natural. He's comfortable. Can he hit these shots though? Two coming, maybe even the lineup. MIBR is just drawn to a halt. Nice shot from Alex. Yell picks up Floppy in the meantime though. Alex still with two players to deal with. Another shot and 1v1 versus the Orpa. He's posted. He sees him leave. And Alex has no reason to move off this angle. 6 to 13. Cloud9 slow and steady, but clawing it back. Yeah, Alex has been really a revelation, I think, on the Orp so far. It's such a new role for him. And. I think he's been doing a really great job. I think we talked about it. I mean, we've been talking about it constantly, I guess, because we're seeing Cloud9 uh, every day. But he, it feels like he has, he's really applied his own sort of style to it, like his own flair on top of, you know, what does my team need, as opposed to really trying to copy any any formulas. And of course, you know, he's worked with some of the best authors in the business. Of course, you know, most notably, you know, Zywu. Um, so he he really understands i think the role and what it's capable of and and the different ways you can play it and around uh you know your teammates and he's just looking super steady with it too like he really he hits he hits the shots and he's not afraid to find those off timings for those quick picks that can be very pivotal before like a push comes in or something so it's uh, it's really encouraging to see them have a good start here and um, it's going to be interesting also to see whether or not MIBR can find some way to kind of get rid of the economy of Cloud9, because that, that's really the, that's really what's going to be, I think, to me, you know, once they can get the all out of their hands, Alex, they're going to be good to go. It's a great little push from Cloud9. And it's, it's pretty cool again, because, you know, in, the, in their past matches, they played a very, very passive style, so trying to adapt as well to their opponent and be unpredictable also. You've got to throw out the aggression every so often. You have to keep those questions in your opponent's head. Ooh. Well, going to try and attempt to be play, and they get past the first map, but not the second. Still two here to worry about. Zeppa and Floppy in at B, putting on a bit of a show and getting it down to just one man remaining. It's Yell again. Surely not enough for the AWP of MIBR. This would be, what, his third save round in a row? He's getting out of there with it. Honestly, I think there comes a point where, where saving almost becomes harmful, right? Like, we've seen how the, the economy management for MIBR 
because sometimes get a little bit weird, right? That's That's been a reoccurring theme in a lot of the series we've seen them in where it feels like they kind of starve themselves of money. I think Yell dying at the end there isn't the end of the world because, you know, now he's got the same amount of cash as the rest of his team. They can rebalance that out a little bit and he'll still be fine to bring the AWP out in the coming round so long as, you know, someone saves some of this money. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It, I think what it does is it sometimes... It just sometimes pigeonholes the team into certain moves that maybe they don't want to really make. And because of the way the money is. Um, either way, we'll have a fast round here. The pistols are out for MIBR. They're going to be charging that B site, looking for that fast approach, fast trades. But, oh my god, so blind on the site. How is that not a kill just yet? There we go. Finally, we'll get a an exchange of frags. But it is, of course, going to be better for the defenders. Cloud9... In a great position to succeed here. Zephyr, he's, oh my god, he's mad. Absolutely <laughs> yeah. mad stuff from Zephyr. Gives him an AK. Yeah. Sign sealed and delivered, posted into the hands of Yell. He's going to throw it out of there to his teammate. Shiz giving it a go instead. Yell lining up a flash. And I mean, if MIBR win this round, oof. That would be a real catastrophe for Cloud9, but I'm not banking on it yet. S-Tag is still here supporting Alex. Messi up on the top. Alex sees Yell, gets rid of him. The AK is still in the hands of Shiz, moving into the same position. And that's a beautiful headshot. Short player gone, all on Shiz. He's got the bomb, he can plant, and they have to respect that. But Messi from above lays down the fire. Cloud9 deal with the pistols, albeit a little bit close for comfort. Man, one of the weird things right now is like MIBR are trying to play this really slow T side where they wait and see what Cloud9 are willing to give up. And if anything, it feels like the faster rounds have been better, right? At like not allowing Cloud9's aggression to find anything. And on top of that, I think the slow style that MIBR are playing, it feels very disjointed. Like a lot of the time, there's not really trade potential or whenever there is, they keep getting mowed down in like some weird, you know, some weird fashion where it's not quite padding out in their favor. I know that, you know, going for things like gamble rushes and all that can't work all the time, but, but you know, they, they need they need a matter of rounds to get this game over the line. I think not just reserving it for rounds like that where you're on ecos where, you know, you actually have a bit more to go behind it might not be a bad idea, honestly, just to give it a go once, right? You don't want to get to the point where it's all tied up at 13-13 and, and then you throw in, like, your, thir your first B rush on some partial buy and then you win the round, but you still end up losing the game because then it's like, oh, well, why didn't we just try that sooner? I don't know, man. I just think this this slow style is really letting Cloud9 excel in getting a pick, getting out of there, basically doing to MIBR what MIBR did to them the entire first half. Yeah, if this was the full 13-2 comeback, that would be unbelievable for Cloud9, honestly. MIBR, will they figure it out? We've, we've had our fair share of comebacks today anyway. Dan, we had a 13-6 lead for NIP on CT Vertigo that they lost without another round. So 13-2 doesn't sound that unrealistic, as crazy as that is to say. Orp in the toilets. Messi and Alex, never far apart. The British brethren versus the Brazilian boys, as he tucked. Hard angle to clear, certainly. He goes a bit wider, sees the shadow, good spray, almost gets a second, but now he's in for a chance, and Shiz as well, Price is pushing it to B desperately, Zappa deals with them, and this round has fallen apart again, Harry, we're, we're getting very similar slow rounds, and might be our very split, and now in a two on four with a player on either side of the map. Yeah, desperate times. It's good to see so far, though, that Cloud9 have been able to find so much success to make this really competitive. And you don't want to spam this spot that you're talking about, Harry, at Divider, you know, this time because you don't, you'd give up the whole game. So it becomes a very powerful position in that sense. Oh, okay. The timing is... I don't know how this is going to go exactly. Oh, God. He's going to find Yell. Yell is going to have assumed that that would have been safe. That's unfortunate. It's going to be the AWP out of his hands and died after time, I believe, right? So that's uh, that's painful. 
Yeah, I definitely agree with the the sentiment about uh, about running some of the faster stuff. So I hope that that's something that we start to see. I think allowing Cloud9 a lot of space to kind of just manage things and and not having as much of that kind of urgent pressure of the fast plays is giving them a lot to work with. And it kind of allows them to play in their comfort zone too. Yeah, I mean, you know, like even even thinking to the MIBRCT side, right? They were very, very good at these like one, two punches and then just getting out of there. And it's not really it's not really materializing this way over on the T side. Like even this round here, right? You have those two players near each other at long, so it's more like fair play, you know, it getting the double in the first place. There was that trade potential. But once they're gone, you know, the next guy was Yell and he and he's all the way back down long. Like he can't trade that. He just ends up waiting. And then by the time the bombs rotated back around, there's not even time to actually go for the bomb plant anymore. So so this slow style is really punishing MIBR. And it feels like it's giving Cloud9 it a kind of easy time at this comeback like they, they're probably surprised at how at how this is feeling like just completely under control not really tested at all oh there's the uh there's the opener again no chance to trade that one right the smoke spammed out of the round cloud9 needed door and they boosted on top of the site and s tag hits a, a perfect grenade and then combos it with a spam and kills yell even getting another player low who is running through the smoke danico Leading up towards a no info for S tag. He doesn't actually spot these players on the jump, but he will hear them calling for help from long mollied out. Has to go wide for the fight. Can't get a single kill, but Messi's position is massive. Will the long lurker be there in time? Messi not firing shot in the back as he was grinded off the angle. Zeppa is already here, putting up a fight, dropping the bomb. And why does the bomb chase? I don't know. That could have been MIBR resetting or, or trying to plant, but Danico's given the package away. And this round's done. Surely Shiz. 1v3, on for the 4k, mollied out, can reset, 30 seconds to do it. But this would be a blunder by Cloud9, surely. They've got everything going for them with the bomb so deep. Nice. Oh. I've got all the angles. Well, um, it's it's uh, it felt like a little bit more promising at least. There were like opportunities to to make things happen there. But this is kind of this is one of the issues as well. I think uh, you know we're seeing from Zappa, but you know so many of the of the players from Cloud Nine, they are just actually awesome. They're just so good at the game, and in terms of like the individual capacity, the individual output has just been really just 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 totally phenomenal, really. So. Here we go. We get a faster approach through sewers. Oh, it let's get it. The pistols. Okay, they win this. This is interesting. This is interesting indeed. But the intrigue's gone. The <laughs> spray down's in for S tag. You know, it feels kind of bad, man, for the two that actually went in because <laughs> everyone else is lagging behind. Thanks to these smokes. Thanks to this utility from Cloud9. And there's the lock in. You know, it's it's one of these things. They try the fast around. Like I say, they do it on one of these partial investments, right? You, you try and give it a go there. Then now you kind of write it off in your head. You go, well, that didn't work. Let's try something else. Let's go back to what we were doing. Uh, you know, maybe we're just going to see one of these defaults again. But but honestly, with, with the default in it, it feels like you're very much relying on, on the individuals that are taking these fights to be winning them. And in, in this second half, MIBR haven't. You know, a reminder for anyone tuning in, you're probably thinking, oh, we have some sick, close Cloud9 MIBR game been back and forth. Well, no, it hasn't. Uh, it, it's literally just been... 13 2 half from MIBR into this insane streak of rounds from Cloud9. And like props to them for making it making it happen. But I also don't think they've been challenged massively by MIBR just yet. Now that's a nice little nade stack to deal with Floppy. Here's this con wrap from Mezzi. And so finally we need a bit more of a of, of a kind of heroics now from Cloud9 as the pressure's been applied liberally towards this B site early in the round. Mezzi's flank has at least slowed down the push. And there is also an early rotation down towards B, or at least there was. Now, Zeppa going back up towards that, uh, that A bomb. So I think it's Zeppa. Can't actually read. No, it's not. It's Alex with the AWP over towards Long. Mezzi falling back out of the connector. But his presence there was great because essentially now Cloud9 know, well, they couldn't have got up Con. The only place Alex has had to worry about is Long. Maybe there was a chance at like a mid wrap or something. mezzi has been given time to get out of there though and got the info that no one was mid. And so Cloud9, they know to readjust here. They know to go back to this 2-2 split and they've had more than enough time to make those necessary adjustments.
Are they ready for the long toilets play? Might just blindside these guys coming out of Khan. There he is with the swing. Traded after one. Oh, they're going to they're gonna go back here. Looks like they're going to go back. And it's going to be perfect timing too. Because Cloud9, with how low the time is, are actually quite convinced that it's going to be an A play. But in fact, MTB bombsite, and if the bomb goes down quickly, they maybe have to, may, maybe they'll actually have time to get some post part positioning. It's looking pretty rough here. Bolts will just face, and there's nowhere to go for SAC. He's got a fight, and he's going to only be able to take down a single player. I mean, it was, it was a good maneuver, but it's a hard spot, you know, in the post part. As you can see, there wasn't time to get position. And 13 13, all tied up. And it's it's crazy, right? Because it does actually feel like Cloud9 are going to win because they haven't been losing rounds on this CT side. Have they lost a single round? They have not, I don't think. No, they haven't lost a single round yet. It was 13 2 at the end of uh, the first half. And now, <laughs> well, now it's 13 <laughs> 13. MIBR. Stuck in time. Our oh, Cloud9 yeah. are progressing forward. I, I just don't know what's happening really at this point. It's very imp impressive work from Cloud9, but MIBR, like you, it's, I don't know. I've not seen a 13 2 come back in a while. Usually something is salvaged, not, one fast well, eco win. Exactly, right? Like, yeah, normally there's something, or there's at least something you look at and you go, well, at least they made that close. Mate, all of these rounds have just been washes, it feels like, for the most part. I think the best they've probably had would be like getting it down to uh, to that 2v3 in the round prior. And, and even then it ended immediately, yeah. you know, like with, with really nothing getting done. What have we got here then? Jump up, maybe boost on the head. With the orb, that's always a nice play. Oh, Alex, he's going for it. This orb has been so good, honestly. Like... Doesn't want to feed here. Don't want to go any further than this with four players around the corner. He doesn't know. Oh, the volley. It burns Danico into the fire. Or well, the firing line, rather. And here come MIBR. Cloud9, four players on the site. No surprises here. They've been reading this one well. It's been pretty obvious. S-Tag doubles up with the AK. Messi still tucked and they have no idea. Oh, great Ooh. shot from Yell. Nice swing and a, oh. another win from Yell as he goes down into a one versus two. He's got 20 seconds to plant the bomb. It's not a lot of time here as he tries to find the next player. Oh, he gets that tag too, catching him on that jiggle. And now it's Floppy, who knows where Yell is, but the more time passes, the less sure he can be. Although he hears the reload. He wants to go for the fight. The pressure comes through from Floppy. Oh. oh my God, he didn't even have to do that. The bomb had to go down. Floppy's an insane human. Yeah, yeah, well, damn good try, right? Maybe a clutch would have been the answer, a one on four. Pulls it back to the 1v1 and still falls short. Cloud9 looking like they're going to lock in their map pick right now. Nothing else yep. pointing in the way. Like we all expected. Yep, at 13 2 half, that's exactly what I said. I said, ah, easy for Cloud9. <laughs> I mean, you take this win, but you certainly would struggle repeating it. You know, Henry sat there at home thinking 13 2 half, right where we want him, boys. Let's yeah. get it. Here we go. Overconfident, you know. Well, don't worry. I can assure you now that any semblance of confidence <laughs> has been <laughs> obliterated for, <laughs> for MIPR. All right. Let's walk our monster. What could go wrong now? It's been going so well for us. Five players. Three here for Cloud9. Flashes in, Floppy drops the smoke, you play around the pillar, spray there, chasing him down through the Molotov, he hides in the smoke, they're so blind, bye bye, and Floppy just pillar, round and round he goes, dropping the bomb, feels like I say that every round, and smoke shots to close it out, it's 15 to 13, Cloud9, not dropping a single CT sided round. But is it the case that MIBR just, they just need their backs to be against the wall? <laughs> Maybe that's it's all they need, Dad. Yeah, I love it. I love, I love the, uh, I mean, hey, it w honestly, it would be so Counter-Strike if they now win two, take us to overtime, yeah. double overtime, yeah. and then and then, MI, and then MIBR win. And then Cloud9 win in overtime. No, who, at this point, who knows? That nade looked like he could have done huge damage, but they were actually trapped back by the molly. Okay, MIBR. <sighs> Where now? Toilet smoke in. 
Standard setup. Alex at long with the orb. He's holding from the pillow or from the flower beds rather. Mezzi's on the site. Yumping their way down lower. We got the boost on B as well. That's a swing off a flash. S tag setting floppy up for a kill. And then he steals one right back from the boost. And this is just the game. It seems like 5v2. MIBR seconds into the round picked apart from the aggressive moves of Cloud9. And that that's great. No fear from Cloud9 to make these plays to take away the kills. They've got the confidence. They've got the score for it. Alex in the toilets. He could even take that knife kill, but he just wants to close this out clean as can be. No deaths today for Cloud9. 16 to 13. Easy does it. The flawless CT side after going 13 to down at the half. That's just incredible, actually. <laughs> the resi resilience for that grind. It just looks so pedestrian at all at all times. There was never... I mean, there was a couple clutch, uh, you know, attempts from MIBR, but ultimately, even though Cloud9 went down 13 rounds in the first half, they still didn't look close to losing. And you wrap your head around that one <laughs> in the second <laughs> half. Like, how does that make sense? Nah, but, man, that, uh, that, but that's mental. That is honestly mental. And, you know, like, I, I've been I've been pretty on board the MIBR hype train throughout this event. But I've got to say, that was, that was dismal in the second half, man. Like, I think one of the reasons why it looked and felt so easy was, like, there was never a moment where you were going for Cloud9. Like, oh, it's all hanging in the balance now. You know, like, they got ahead in the money. They were winning rounds cleanly. It, they never really got tested in, in that second half of play. So... So yeah, man, Cloud9 at least showing us they have the resilience to uh, to go on these reverse sweeps, which is always nice to see. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we still have more Counter-Strike yet to be played. So join us in just a moment where I'm sure there'll be more comebacks, more fun and uh, and all that good stuff right around the corner. So stay tuned.